Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today we're looking at the legendary Malconic EK43 and the new kit on the block, the Bentwood Vertical 63. So if you're watching this video, you more than likely already know the Malconic EK43. This grinder is legendary and seen in most cafes around the world. Due to its versatility, it really can go from espresso all the way to filter really easily. Big 98mm burrs, really good grind uniformity and as of about 10-15 years ago, it really appeared in the scene when it was used in the World Barista Comps. Before that, it was pretty much a wheat grinder. Now came the Bentwood. For much of what the EK was legendary at, it was really predominantly built as a retail grinder, so not really easy to use for dosing into a porter filter. With the Bentwood, they've added a timer and pretty much did a grind on the man grinder using vertical blades, in this case a lot smaller, 63mm blades, but screwless. So the screws aren't affecting any of the coffee, even though the blades are smaller, you're still getting that uniformity. And depending on what you do down here, either putting in a scale, a port and filter support, your AeroPress directly, your V60, or a small 250 gram retail bag, it is a very versatile grinder. But they are very different. So first things first, let's grind out of both just to get a rough idea of the workflow and then go from there to really dive into the differences of these two grinders. So with the EK43, you're pretty much not gonna be using the hopper unless you're using it for retail. Call it a 250 grams, 500 or a kilo bag. And on the tall version, you can use a kilo bag easily. They do come in the EK43S, which is a shorter version, which you can really only load the 250 gram bag into. What most people are doing is pre-weighing coffee into a dosing cup. In this case, we have 20 grams. Loading it into the grinder, starting the grinder, opening the chute, and grinding directly into the dosing cup. So let's do that. And you've got 20 grams of coffee ground in, very evenly distributed. You normally get in your porter filter, dosing in. Most cases you'll be weighing on the way out to make sure you did get your 20 grams out, but it is a very consistent grinder. And from there, you're tamping and off you go. Now the Bentwood. The Bentwood does things a little bit different. Where with the EK, we're generally gonna have a big hopper up there, but we're not feeling it unless we're doing retail coffee. We're gonna be putting just 20 grams in and out comes 20 grams. With the Bentwood, it's designed to have coffee in the hopper or as a single dose, and it's gonna be grinding based on time into whatever device you want. If you're gonna use a porter filter, you're gonna use a porter filter support, like the Time More Cube. It does come with a support, but because it's light, it will vibrate around unless you put the two screws through it. If you want to change between devices, think porter filter, putting on a scale, AeroPress, V60, or a small retail bag, it's easier to have something that's flexible to move in and out of. Bear in mind, the base here is magnetic, so you could have multiple bases and then swap them around. In this case, we're going to grind seven seconds directly into the porter filter, which will equate to about 20 grams of coffee. Now both grinders are highly uniform, very fluffy, consistent grinds, but they are different. Where the grinds are really similar is that they both are running vertical mounted burrs. But where they're different is in their workflow. The EK started its life as a retail grinder. You'd put half a kilo, one kilo of coffee up there, you'd put a bag down here and grind through anywhere from espresso to filter. It's been adapted to grinding single dose. So getting 20 grams or so of coffee in and out into whatever vessel you want and transferring it to a porter filter. 20 grams in, 20 grams out into a dosing cup, transferring it like we did before. And it's a highly versatile grinder. It is however easy to dial in between espresso and filter, but sometimes hard to truly dial in espresso with a small movement making a big difference. With the Bentwood, they've gone a little bit different. It's not focused on being a retail. Actually, they don't recommend doing more than 500 grams of coffee in a row. 
But what it is, is it really looks at how to dial it in. So instead of having numbers to dial in, they actually have microns. So for espresso, you're gonna be between 80 and 200 microns. And it makes it easier to compare recipes from the, say the roaster to the cafe. Also, the blades don't need calibration. They fit into a unique aluminum housing. The tolerance is so tight, they actually hold in the blades without any screws. And that's a big difference. Not having to calibrate the blades and also to be able to dial in in microns is huge. And adding the grind by time, like you'd find in most grinders, makes a big difference in that you can really now start using this grinder by having coffee in the dosing hopper, adjusting your grind and grinding into a water filter, an AeroPress, a V60, or even a small retail bag. And that's where the grinders differ. Now, going back to their history, Malconic is made in Germany by the Henro Group. And we don't really need to talk too much about Malconic because they are the king. They're well known, they're everywhere. And if you don't know about Malconic yet, you probably haven't been in specialty coffee long enough. The Bentwood is a little different. It's a Swiss-based company it's been designed in Germany and it's manufactured in Italy. And the actual name Bentwood comes from the early chairs made out of Bentwood in the cafes of Vienna. And on a funny side note, it's been likened to Thomas the Tank Engine, which kind of looks cool. So this video was just a quick comparison, very high level overview. But we have done videos on both the EK and the Bentwood individually. But I'm curious to know in the comments below, which grinder would you pick for your cafe and which grinder would you pick for your home? Do you think they're a replacement of either or, or do you still think the Malconic is king? Let me know in the comments below. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you and see you on the next video.